Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be talking about the... Up, the Not upcoming, they're out by the time you've seen this video. Banner units that are coming with the Fago Summer 2020 Event Revival. That was going to be today's video. I hope you like it, and let's get right into it. I'd actually planned for this video to actually come out yesterday, so you'd, I'd have a day to talk about them, but uh, due to Breath of the Wild, the first video I recorded on it was me, was me very being very distracted, and me going like, oh yeah, these dates seem rightish, and I had the dates completely wrong, and the video was completely screwed up, <laughs> so I couldn't release it, which is why I released the video with my brother instead. So yeah. Uh, hopefully I get it right this time. This is, this, by the way, this is the event. You can do the event itself. It's a pretty, it's a revival event. You have plenty of time to do it. You only need to clear Fuyuki. The event servant that comes with it is extremely good, which you can see here. You may raid Lancer. She's extremely good. Very nice to have. Uh, even as someone who doesn't use a lot of quick, I like having her in general because I like having her for summertime because during summertime I don't focus that much on, um, doing crazy, um... Team comps three turn everything, and I just kind of just play, and she's really great for that. That's really what I do for most summer time events is that I don't focus too hard unless it's like crazy, except for the BB summer. For BB summer, I did have to do crazy three comps, and then after that, I stopped. But anyway, yeah, she's good. You can get her. So let's go over the summoning campaigns because there's two of them. First of all, let's talk about the men as we quickly look at them, and I say, Hey, look, it's Sigurd. Hey, look, it's Prince of Lang Ling, and it's also Emmy Young. Along with some raid up craft essences, which is Innocent Blue, Climbing Battle, and BFF Barbecue. None of them uh, too good, except for unless you care about the art. If you want this man's art in full, full glory, then yeah, go for that CE, I guess. But yeah, I'm going to very quickly go over them. The strong points about them all very quickly without actually going over their skills. Because <laughs> for the most part, not a lot of people care about the dudes. It's just a sad truth of life. Emiya is extremely good. I don't think there's ever been a point where he would... Like, maybe you could debate when he released he wasn't that good, but even I would say, no, he was good even back then when he released. They've done an extremely good job of constantly, like, updating him as time has gone on with his skills to the point where he has, like, a crazy stupid skill that's, like, that got a second strengthening that lets him choose between arts and... Uh, Buster, so what I can actually show that much. Again, I won't go into full detail, but I can at least tell you right now. Uh, see, so yeah, you can see Trace on EX. He's literally... He's Embia. They're getting... <laughs> if you have Embia, you don't have to worry about him ever being bad, because they'll always figure out a way to buff him, because it's Embia. Like, even if I don't like Embia, it doesn't matter. Everyone else does. <laughs> So they're always going to find a way to buff him. <laughs> so he's good. Solid investment if you're looking at it from a pure investment standpoint of how good are they. He's extremely good. But he's also always on every single banner. So no real rush to try and just get him specifically. Princess Langling is unfortunately one of those characters who is not a single target or AoE servant. So I don't actually have that much knowledge about him so i can't say anything positive or really negative about him even if i did look at his kid and tell you um if you have something to say about him feel free to tell me because i would love it for next time so i actually know something to say i have him i just don't use him i do like his summer outfit though it's pretty nice and sigurd is the last one he is va is voiced by kaiba and that is maybe the most notable thing about him uh he needs more buffs that's basically it. He received one, I think, pretty recently with the Strength in 2, which is pretty nice. It's much better than it was beforehand, which was a one-time 50% buster up and uh, guts. But now he has it for at least three attacks for over three turns, which is pretty nice. But the rest of them, it could just use, like, a little bit better. Like, there are, in terms, funny enough, this overcharge effect, which is nice to deal extra damage to dragon enemies... Enough people have this ability that it's not that impressive, <laughs> to me at least. It, he just needs more. And also considering he is Buster, he is AoE, and he doesn't have an ability that lets him like loop his Noble Phantasm while also being like an AoE unit. Oh no, it's not an AoE unit. I'm done. He's a single target. So yeah, again, if you only want to kill one single dragon, he's usually your go-to guy. But honestly, out of all the Dragon Slayers, I think there's just better options than him for the most part. 
but that's how I feel. I just feel like that. I it's a shame because I really do like him. I like the design. I think he's cool looking. But I've always felt like he just needed some more buffs, which is crazy because he has like a hundred percent crit damage up, and that's really good. It's just not enough. <laughs> it's just not enough, really, to be honest. Uh, next. But yeah, he's not. I don't think he's like. I think some people do actually think he's awful, but I don't think he's awful. I just think he needs more buffs, which I guess there's a strict difference. Like for example, Caster Gill, he's awful. No amount of, no, uh, Geronimo is awful. No amount of buffs could make him good unless they actively made every single one of his skills targetable to anyone, but they would never do that for a three-star caster. I would consider him probably a, <laughs> a not a good cause to keep going for, unless they did that drastic measure for him, but they never, I doubt they'll do it for him. For Sigurd, I think there's still a chance for him to be eventually buffed up to be good. It's just a matter of waiting and if they'll ever do it and stuff like that. It's a matter of just waiting a really long time to see it happen. <sighs> anyway, let's move on. We have Horror Concierge, which is the CE, Honey Lake, and Happy Drive. None of them again crazy must own CEs, but they do have some really nice art to the point where I keep forgetting that this is a unit that we have. <laughs> if it was not for the skull, I would not know who this is. <laughs> the other two are very nice. Um, in terms of Summer Banner 1, which is the one I'll be going at, over, uh, we have Brunhilda, Ilya, and Kiara. I'll go over Brunhilda real quick. Brunhilda, she's a three buster, one arts, one quick berserker. So she's a buster gorilla. Uh, active skills, Savant Hit, S1, Mystic Code, Summer A+, Grant Self Evasion for 2 attacks, 3 turns, Reduce on damage taken for 3 attacks, 3 turns, damage taken minus is 1000. Second skill is Midsummer's Wisdom B, charges on NP gauge every turn for 3 turns, gain crit stars every turn for 3 turns, 20% regen, and then 10 uh, star regen. Third skill is Summertime Lover's EX, increase on art performance for 3 turns, increase on buster performance for 3 turns, really great with the 1. Art, so it's really doing big help right there. Increase art performance for Brunhilde's beloved allies except for herself for three turns, and also the Buster for her beloved's three turns. So 30% uh, arts and 30% Buster to her, and then 30% arts and 30% Buster to her beloved's, which is pretty nice actually. It's not bad <laughs> to scoff at. Her, madden um, her madness enhancement is D minus, and her divinity is E. Her third skill is an anti lancer critical attack chance resistance, which is funny. She's on critical attack chance against Lancer enemies, because that's her former one. Um, and the Valkyries as well. <clears throat> anyway, Noble Phantasm is B rank, hits five times, it's Buster. Ignores invincibility for one turn, activates first, and then deals damage to all enemies. Increased Buster performance for one turn. The damage is 300% at level 1, and then if you get an MP5, it's 500%, and the overcharge is 20% uh, Buster up, and then at the last level, it is 60%. I think she's pretty okay. Um, obviously there are ways to use her if you're someone who's going to be investing a lot in the upcoming kind of buster units, like in charging your own MP gauge every turn for three turns. So I think it's possible for her to get 40% MP back every single turn if you use the ability to... No, this is on a six turn cooldown. Could you actually do that? I think it actually is possible. Hmm. I don't know, but I think I don't know how well those effects are, considering that a lot of the time, whenever I see the units that seem to work best with like Vich and Oberon, tend to be the ones that get like a quick. Like it's not that they get twenty percent over time; it's that they get fifty percent, thirty percent, seventy percent in some cases now, and they get it now, and they can take advantage of it now. This is a little bit different in in a lot of cases, but anyway. I digress. I think she's uh, okay. I like looking at her. I think she's really nicely designed. Like I like, I like every single one of these forms. I like how this perfectly goes with Sigurd um, in his summer outfit. I think that's cute. I think that's adorable. I'm a big fan of Brunhilda, and I'm happy that I pulled for her and that I have her. And I think that's good enough. If you're someone who's a big fan of Brunhilda, obviously this is a great unit. If you're someone who's not a big fan of Brunhilda, I'll say that there are obviously better Buster Gorillas. <laughs> I, I don't think that's a controversial take. Original Alter, my ultimate gorilla boy, Ilya. And even if it wasn't for him, it, you know, I digress. Anyway, Ilya von Eisenberg, the four-star archer summer version. First skill is a high pressure A, increases own quick performance for three turns. Actually, one moment. 
Okay. Back at it. Uh, high pressure A increases own quick performance for three turns. Increases own critical star absorption for quick cards for one turn. Increases own crit damage for one turn. 20%, 500%, 100%. Second skill. Summer Vacation Child A. Grant self invincibility for one attack three turns. Increase on MP generation rate for three turns. Increase the attack of Child Servant Allies for three turns. 30% MP rate and Child Servant attack up by 20%. Regal Shower B++, charges own MP gauge, increases own critical damage for 3 turns, 70% chance to recover own HP by 500 for every turn for 5 turns. MP up is 30%, crit damage up is 50%, so combine that with this. So I crit damage for a single turn. 150%- <laughs> How much crit damage do you get, Sigurd? Crit damage up for 3 attacks, 3 turns, 100%. Oh yeah, how much do you get? Good that one turn is 100%. Okay, 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 50%. So, <laughs> like I said, Sigurd needs a buff. Even though this does last for three turns, maybe just a little bit more. I think you could say that's fair after looking at Ilya giving herself 150% crit damage, and she's a four-star summer servant. That's just silly. Anyway, uh, magic resistance A, independent action B, independent mana supply C. Uh, third skill is anti archer. Increase on attack against archer enemies, trust no one, not even yourself. And rank A, prisma splash rainbow. Oh, maiden become a rainbow. Hits five times quick, noble phantasm. I forgot to mention, I actually don't remember. Two quicks, two arts, one buster. Mm, ignores evasion for one turn, activates first, deals damage to all enemies. Damage is 600% at level 1, and then if you get her to MP5, it's 1000, and then her overcharge effect is an increase into quick performance, arts performance, and buster performance for one turn. It's 10% at charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it is 50%. And yeah, that's Ilya. I actually kind of like her for a quick archer uh, looper. I think she does pretty good at that. She has enough... Having the MP Charger is enough. I think she has the ability to increase own MP generation, which is huge for Quick Servants. She has a decent amount of hits on our Noble Phantasm. And yeah, I end up using her a whole bunch for that specifically. Like I said, I don't really quick... Um, I don't do a lot of quick <laughs> team comps nowadays because I'm so invested in arts and I used quick for like two years straight. So I needed a little break from using Scotty constantly and now I use Castoria constantly. But I think when I do use Ilya, for specifically for summertime, and I was like, oh, you know what, let me try with the Scotty stuff. She was pretty solid at it, so I was a big fan of that. Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Ilya, I think this is actually probably the easiest Ilya to get, and one of the better ones. <clears throat> Just because there's typically a lot more use for an AoE Archer than there is for a um, single target caster and a single target alter ego even though Setonia is not Ilya it is a version of Ilya but I, I am constantly digressing in this episode in this episode this video so yeah I think she's pretty cool and if for some reason you weren't looping hey you could do a silly little kids child servant <laughs> type of build with her um you could do a bunch of other silly stuff crit damage up <laughs> 150% for a single turn it's not bad anyway Moving on to the final unit. This is the this is the one. If there was ever a unit on here, the other units on here, none of these are gonna ever tempt you to summon before the anniversary or even the next summer. But this one might. It's Summer Kiara. Uh, she's a Moon Cancer. She is one quick, two arts, two buster. She her first skill. <clears throat> Mermaid Flesh EX, Grant Self Gut Stats for one time, five turns, remove own debuffs, recover his own HP every turn for three turns, increase own MP damage by 20% for three turns, Grant Self the Mermaid's Nourishment, Regeneration buff for four turns, Mermaid's Nourishment, Grant Self Skill Rank Up buff, four turns every turn for four turns, Skill Rank Up is used uh, to rank up second and third skills, maximum of two ranks per skill, Skill Rank Up can stack, Skill Rank Up that are used to rank up skills will be consumed. And she revives with her guts of 4,000 HP, and her HP regen is 2,000. So what does all that mean? Obviously, 
She has she gets MP, she removes her own debuff. She gets uh, guts by four thousand, increases MP damage by twenty percent. And what is that mermaid's nourishment? Well, it deals with this one right here. So these other two skills of her can be ranked up, and both of them can be ranked up by two levels. And every turn is you get like one of these, and then there's a maximum rank of four of them that you can have. I think uh, you can only use a max of two rank ups per skill. But her second skill is Supernatural Power Inc. B. And it can upgrade all the way to A if you use the second skill, the uh, skill rank ups. But with no rank ups, it's a charge your own MP gauge and gain crit stars, 30% NP and 20 stars and a cooldown of 5. And then if you upgrade it 1, you get 40% NP and you get 25 stars. And if you upgrade it while well, you have two skill rank up buffs, it's 50% NP and 30 stars, which is really nice. Her third skill is the Clan Palace A, and then you can get it all the way to Clan Palace A++. And in terms of its A rank, it grants the party evasion for one attack three turns. It removes their ability to ignore evasion buff. <laughs> removes all enemies, ignore invasion buff, buff, which I never knew she did that. <laughs> it's a really good ability. And then she inflicts Bewitchment debuff. Uh, to them for three turns. Bewitchment reduces critical attack chance by 10%, and then it reduces their defense for three turns, and then reduces their arch resistance by 20% for three turns. And defense down is their 20%. With one skill rank up, it she now gives them two stacks of Bewitchment. She reduces their defense by 25%, reduces their arch resistance by 25% as well, and a 500% chance to remove one st stack up. So yeah. And then at the final skill level... <laughs> She gives them three stacks of Bewitchment. The, the final reducing defense level at level 10 is 30%. And then it's a 30% art resistance. And boom, really good ability. And that's still keeping the granting party evasion attack for one attack three turns. And removing the ability to ignore invasion. Whew. Her passive skills are Treasure Creation EX, Spiritual World Creation EX, Independent Manifestation E, and then Logo Seeder D. And her third skill is an anti-caster, uh, increased attack against casters, because of course, Hans. And then a Noble Phantasm is a art with only three hits, deals damage to all enemies, deals 100% plus 20% extra damage to all enemies with mental debuffs. Mental debuffs max 10 stacks. Mental debuffs are uh, being asleep, being having bewitchment, being charmed, having a charm resistance down, Having charm resistance down, having confusion, having the ability that says you could get confused, having eternal sleep, having terror, and having the actual ability of terror, because there's two types of terror. There's terror, you're going to get terror potentially, and then there's actual terror, both of them count. And then her damage is 450% at level 1 and 750 at level 5. Her overcharge effect, which is a chance to insta-kill foes. Instant kill always succeeds against mob enemies that have 100% death rate, basically bronze rarity. Using a Sayo High School uniform, level 10 can kill enemies with 80% death rate at overcharge level 1. And the reason is, is that her overcharge is 100% chance of death at charge level 1. And if you get it all the way to the final charge, it's uh, 150%. And this also, the instant death check also is after you hit with all your um, your damage. So what that means is that in terms of arts looping, the reason a lot of um, instant death dudes are usually pretty bad when it comes to looping is that they instant kill first and then that doesn't count towards them getting any hits of NP gain. That doesn't happen here. She actually deals all the damage, she does a buttload of damage, and then she gets the MP gain from that, and then if they're still alive, then she insta-kills them. I believe that's how it works. At least that's always how I've assumed it works, and that's why she ends up being very good. Because otherwise, if you have a chance... That's why I think someone like um, Naito ends up being not as good for looping, is that she has a chance to insta-kill with one of her attacks, and if that happens, then boom, you're basically done, and it doesn't count towards MP gain, which is a big suck when you're actually trying to loop and stuff like that. She's very good. She's insanely good. Uh, I constantly forget it because I have her, Musashi, and Space Ishtar, which are like the big three in terms of arts looping. And I constantly forget Kiara. It's not on purpose. It's literally because I have too many of them and I typically go for Musashi. But she's insanely good. Um, the only thing that I would say that would be holding someone back from going for her this year is that if you're really looking for... <laughs> a big uh, summer unit that's insanely good at AoE and his arts, 
Uh, this is... <laughs> we're getting another one. <laughs> After the rerun is Actual Summer, which at the, in Japan took place at a stupid time. And this is an insane summer unit they're releasing over there, I think. And, uh, yes, here we go. Summer Kama. She's also arts. And she's also stupid. <laughs> like, on Space Ishtar level, on Kiara's uh, level. And then next year from here, we have B Buki, who is better than all of them combined. <laughs> so if you're someone who's strictly looking at some of the best in terms of art stuff, uh, Kiara is someone... There's plenty of them, is what I'm trying to say here. It's not a competition, to be honest. You could argue back and forth about who's better, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because this is a PvE game, and the one that is actually the best is the girl you like the best. So if you like Kiara a whole bunch, this is almost an instant own for Kiara fans because just because of how stupid good they made this woman. There's just no denying that for some reason they decided to go all out for specifically this version of her. Maybe it's because they, they held back a whole bunch when she was first released, and she was not on the beast level, but this... This version of her is on beast level. It's crazy. It's insane. It's stupid good and definitely worth going for if you're someone who cares a lot about arts and doesn't care a lot about uh, some a lot of the other stuff coming forward. Again, I never want to specifically say, say people, hey, save your stuff, do whatever. At the end of the day, I'm saying do what you want. And if you're someone who's looking at these units saying like, man, I really want Kiara. Is she worth summoning for from a purely strictly is this one of the best units in the game? I would say she is. She is definitely one of the better units in the game. One of the best ones, I would I would say, especially on NA. On the NA side, on JP, different beast, different story. But I would definitely consider one of the best ones, especially after they fixed that glitch with her. <laughs> she was doing insane, and it turned out that she was glitched, and they fixed the glitch, which is really sad, because apparently this glitch has been existing for an extremely long time and been with Quernos this entire time. <laughs> And it wasn't fixed until a woman had the same bond. <laughs> Very sad. But it's fixed on our side, so. Again, do what you want. All, I think all these summer... I think this is a good batch of summer units. The next three, I'll talk about when it's actually closer for them to be released. So you don't have to... We, if you don't have to worry about them now, I don't cover them now. It's my main... Uh, I'll mode it's not Bernandi. But I'm down. Now I'm just saying words I'm not 100% sure the definition of. But anyway... Um, I think these all three of these dudes are rad. Even if their units maybe aren't super crazy, except for <laughs> not Kiara, she is. If these two are, actually, I don't know. I don't. Whatever. I'm not gonna make any bones about it. I like all three of them. <laughs> I'm happy I summoned. I'm happy I have them. Even if I use Ilya and Brunhilda in very niche cases, and I use Kiara in basically any case, I can use Kiara in basically anything I want. The only thing holding me back is that personal choice that's the only thing holding me back from ever using kiara to be honest sometimes she makes it too easy <laughs> so i don't use her but she's cool uh that's enough of me flexing that's it for today's video everyone thank you very much for watching tell me how you did i'm very interested to see how it went for you guys if you are summoning then obviously tell me how you did there's plenty of you who are not summoning and to the people who are not summoning i'm saying hey stay strong the goal is literally, literally almost in sight. You can hold on just a little bit longer. <laughs> just hold on. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. And now I gotta go back to work. Alright, bye.